Hi everyone, I'm Hakima, student of Diploma in English Communication, College Professional Mara Sir Iskandar. Today, I would like to talk about how you greet someone in Japan, table manners and business etiquette in Japan. Japanese etiquette allows different ways to express gratitude in its greetings by using varied honorific forms. Greetings uh, and etiquettes are especially important during a Japanese business meeting. In Japanese, the introduction sounds a bit longer, while also implying something slightly different. They bow rather than shake hands or touch any of the interlocutor's body parts. We know that the same content can be expressed during various degrees of politeness through the use of humble or casual forms. Depending on whom you are speaking to, the etiquette changes. For example, when you're exchanging greetings with an elder or someone superior at work, um, the greetings will be sounds like Hajime mashite, watashi wa, you insert your name, so moshimasu. Dozo yoroshiku onegai itashimasu. Hajime mashite is nice meeting you for the first time. Slimpi put watashi wa, which means my name is, on another hand, to moshimas means I may be called. A tough one to explain. Dozo yoroshiku onegai itashimas. If translate literally, it can be please take care of me. And may sound silly to some, this phrase would show an accent of advanced thankfulness before you officially use arigato gozaimasu, which means thank you. Next, we will move on to table manners. Some restaurants in Japan have low tables and cushion on tatami floor instead of chairs and tables. Shoes and slippers must be removed before stepping on tatami. Also, avoid stepping on cushion other than your own. Wet towel, which is oshibori, are provided at most restaurants to clean your hands before eating. After ordering, it is common to wait for everyone's order and then to start the meal with the phrase itadakimasu, which means I gratefully receive. If a dish is better eaten right away but others at the table have not been received yet, the phrase osaki ni itadakimasu, which means allow me to start before you, can be useful. As we know, using chopsticks is the norm in Japan, but while you may be proud of simply being able to use them without spilling rice on your lap, you also need to be mindful of where you place them throughout the meal. When you are finished eating or you need to pause between bites, lay your chopsticks either at the edge of your plate or the edge of the table or better yet on the chopsticks holder on your plate. Never ever plant your chopsticks into a bowl of rice so that they are sticking up in the air. This resembles the image of the Japanese ritual of burning incense sticks at a funeral. If your business associates are sharing food, as they often do in Japan, take a morsel from the shared plate, then pass the rest to another person. Passing fruit from your chopsticks to another person's chopstick is a big no because of another funeral image. It resembles the way the Japanese handle bones during cremation ceremonies. Plus, it is likely to end up dropping your food. After finishing your meal, it is generally good manner to return all your dishes to how they were at the start of the meal. This includes replacing the lids on dishes and putting your chopstick to the chopstick rest or in its paper holder. Conclude the meal with the phrase Gochiso sama deshita that means thank you for the feast which includes gratitude not only to the cook but also the ingredients consumed. Do not start drinking until everybody at the table has a drink and the glasses are raised for a drinking salute, which is usually kampai. 
when drinking alcoholic beverages, it is customary to serve each other rather than pour your own drink. Predically, check your friends' cups and refill their drinks if their cups are getting empty. While it is considered bad manners to become obviously drunk in some formal restaurants, if you do not drink alcohol, it is no problem to simply say so and request for other beverages instead. Non-alcoholic beverages that are usually available include alcohol-free beer, tea, juices, and carbonated drinks. Next, we'll move on to business etiquette. There are top 5 do's and don'ts of Japanese business etiquette. Number 1. Be on time. This is the golden rule and simply don't be late. This is considered disrespectful in Japan. Being excessively early is inappropriate too. Number 2. Trade business cards which is meishi with care and always be sure to have enough. Business cards are considered the face of a person in Japan and a key of business currency. Treat them delicately when received. Avoid marking them up or losing them and carry more than you think you will need. Number three, try to do or say something Japanese. The effort goes a long way. It doesn't matter if you get it exactly right or become fluent, but make an effort to learn a few cultural norms and get a handful of words in Japanese. The effort will win you huge points and go a long way in relationship building. Number 4. Summarize key points in writing and use visual supplements. Generally speaking, because of the way they learn English, Japanese tend to have a strong comment of written English than spoken. Number 5. Be well groomed and on the formal, conservative side with appearance. With some expectations, professional appearance in Japan tends to be conservative or formal. Etiquette. Number 1. Don't outwardly express negative emotion such as anger or frustrated. Japanese consider open expressions of emotions, especially negative ones. Even if you are upset, it is best to put on your best poker face and speak calmly. Number 2. Don't decline an invitation to socialize. Socializing after working hours is a critical part of relationship building in Japan and often where a lot of bridges are built. If you are interested in furthering business relation, accept any such invitation whenever possible. Number 3. Don't wear flashy accessories, bright clothes or excessive perfume or cologne. Perfumes and cologne are used much more sparingly in Japan. Accessories and clothes that are bright, busily patterned or flashy are not a professional norm in Japan. Number 4. Don't engage in direct confrontation or aggressive tactics. Japanese place great value on harmonious and non-confrontational behavior and communication. Number 5. Don't make excuses. When falling short of expectations, the best approach is simply to apologize for any inconvenience and express that you will work to resolve the problem. That's all for me. I hope this video will help you in the future. Thank you.